Righto guys, Wednesday walkthrough number one, like I said, it's on the Hilux. Um, it's pretty windy here today, so hopefully it, you'll be able to hear me alright, but we'll give it a go. Um, so this is my work car, and yeah, my personal car. It sort of yeah, it gets used to tow the van, tow the boat. Go to work every day of the week, um, and racks up some pretty big Ks, so this is, yeah, I'll try and keep this one fairly tidy for representing work and that sort of thing. But it's a 2016 Toyota Hilux, it's an SR spec, an N80. Um, you got the opposite lock bar work up the front. Steel premium post bar, chuck the fog lights in there just to um, finish the bar off a little bit, make it look a bit a bit nicer. It's got the Ultra Vision 120 LED lights, BRS synthetic rope, 9.5 winch, um, UHF aerial, that's about it. Um, obviously, opposite lock bar work in the side as well, brush rails and steps, pretty happy with those. They've um, been up on top of a few rocks and, yeah, apart from a few scuffs underneath, haven't bent, so I'm happy with them. Suspension wise, it's got a 3 inch lift in the front. Two inch in the back, which just levels it out that little bit. It's a Ride Pro Rock Shocks kit. It was actually one of the first, first few kits, or one of the first kits, if not the first, to go in an N80 Hilux. Um, at the time, I was working managing an opposite lock um, for wood drive shop, and the rep, yeah, worked with me there to to get it in my car, and we sort of did a bit of testing for them. Worked out that the first rear shocks were too short, and um, yeah, they weren't much longer than the standard factory ones, so. We um, flexed it up, took the shocks off, worked out how far we could flex the back of it until it put too much stress on brake lines and things like that and, and gave it gave them a length and they made the shocks to suit that. Um, he gave us a couple of different valvings in the rear shocks and we um, worked with those just to give them a bit of feedback and make sure they got the best kit with on-road tests and that sort of thing. So really happy with that kit. I've recommended quite a few guys with N80s and N70s get that kit. And yeah, brilliant. I'm actually installing a kit in my nephew's N70 um, on the weekend. So... Yeah, bringing it up, but tyre size, not too much bigger than standard, they're 265 70 so didn't need to go any bigger, it's not designed to be my serious off-road car, it's just a, a fairly capable tourer, tow the caravan, obviously being a work car and being driven bulk Ks every day of the week, that we just wanted to keep fuel economy and, and power in mind, that sort of thing, so didn't go too much bigger than standard. Um, Safari snorkel. It's just the, the HF, it's not an Armax. Um, didn't really see the need, I haven't got this tuned. So I don't need any more airflow or anything like that. It was sort of a waste of time. Mechanical wise, as I said, not tuned, it's fairly standard. Um, we've got the catch can, uh, which was on since new, which I just think is a good thing in these, these new cars. The secondary fuel filter, which is a two micron final filter. Um, again, people sort of say it'll avoid your warranty. It can't, it's, you know, it's a good thing. Um, I've had an older Hilux actually had a new motor in it because of diesel, diesel algae, so something that I always put in my four-wheel drives, cheap insurance. Um, so yeah, it's apart um, mechanical-wise, like I said, fairly standard. This thing goes good enough for me. I'm um, not expecting it to be a 200 series. It's a little four-cylinder diesel and it tows my van well. Um, it does have a DPF delete and a straight-through three-inch exhaust, just because I like the note, and also the DPFs have had a, quite a few issues with these models having to go back to dealers because they don't have a manual burn button and just crapping out about 30,000 k's so I didn't want that sort of reliability hanging over my head if you're out doing a desert trip or something like that um, it does have a dual battery we've put it in the canopy just to just to keep the heat down for the second battery I think it makes them last a bit longer and I had the room in the back so there's no need to jam it under there it does have quite a bit of electronics aftermarket on this and we run it all through the factory fuse block there so it all looks fairly standard. You wouldn't pick the amount of electrical that's on this looking under the bonnet, which I like, so it keeps it looking nice and tidy. Um, inside the car, again, fairly standard. Haven't done too much with it. Canvas seat covers. Still got the factory head unit. A lot of guys change them out, but I actually like it. It's, you know, it works through your phone for your navigation. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's got the tweeters. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I don't need a subwoofer or anything like that anymore, so... Uh, it's got the Red, Red Arc Toe Pro, which is the inertia sensing electric brakes. Brilliant. Love those. Um, because it's an SR, it doesn't have the push button start. So that little blank there just looks a little bit like it's not meant to be there and it's not doing anything. So it was a bit of a pain, but just yeah, cut all the back of that blank out and got that to fit in there. So it actually looks like it's meant to be there a little bit now. Um, so down here, switch panel. So we've got the fog lights, um, the factory idle up and the headlight adjustment. The isolation switch for the driving lights. These two are the camp lights, so they're individually switched left and right hand, and that just turns on a little flood work light on the side of the tray. Um, as being a flood light, it doesn't put a heap of light out, but it's just a nice little ambient light out there that 
you can sort of sit under and it's not annoying anything like that um, still plenty of switches down here so I'm planning on um, putting a, a little reverse camera switch on there so you can actually press it and keep the reverse camera on um, for when you're driving with the canopy would be a massive improvement and also having a second um, camera which is already on the back of the van just having a switch there as well that I can flick it through onto a second channel and I can see what's going on behind the van when I'm towing it um, dash cam couple of seats for the uh, the grommets and yeah just the MSA seat back organizer and other than that that's all done um, the tray a lot of people ask about the tray they assume it's a factory Toyota tray it's actually not I built it with my brother-in-law who's a, a welder and a fabricator so we um, I had the idea and he sort of had the, had the skill so we knock, knocked it up um, it's a steel tray 1900 wide about 1760 long I think it is I um, obviously did all the alloy work myself powder coated it locally with a connection there which done it pretty cheap for me when we built the tray we knew what we wanted to put in it and where we wanted to put it so we've put nut certs and everything everywhere so everything bolts in nice and neat it's easy to pull off the nut cert stays there um, yeah rear tyre carriers off a of GU patrol just got it from a wrecker when we got the canopy made we um, yeah designed it out of 3mm alloy and then reinforced the roof reinforced the back wall obviously with the intention of having a roof rack on and hanging a spare tyre off the back put a little bracket under it as well and it's never moved been there for two years solid as had to use it a few times so it's good um, the angled toolboxes obviously being angled they don't don't catch up as much they don't drag I have still sort of bung them up a little bit here and there but if they were a flat box that would obviously be a lot a lot worse condition than what they are you can't sort of pick any damage until you get under it long range tank as I said before it's 153 154 litre long range tank from Outback Accessories it's a steel tank um, nice and yeah it hangs down a little bit lower than I'd like but yeah like I said this isn't my full off-road car so I'm not too worried um, saves me having to fill up every 500 k's so yeah we're um, we get about sort of 1200 k's with the weight of this out of a tank 11 to 1200 and um, you know that's pretty good considering it weighs between 3.4 and sort of a touch, a touch above that depending on whether the full tank is full and how much gear you got in it the ladder I designed myself again and just got an alloy shop down in Yamba to knock up while we're holidaying down there for a few days the original idea was to have it a bit a bit deeper sheet this bottom off and actually have it so I could drop my max tracks in there didn't end up doing that because by the time you work out how wide four max tracks are and have enough clearance to slide them in it was going to look huge so just left it as is a little bracket up there it's a flat screen tv bracket so we've got a little i think it's about a 30 inch flat screen telly we we chuck in there runs off the inverter and the kids can just watch dvds or whatever when you're on long trips not a big advocate of kids watching telly in that when you're out and about i'd rather sort of show them stuff and get them to learn and that sort of thing but occasionally when you're on a long trip it's not bad to chuck the footy on up there or whatever um, so yeah that's sort of gone through most of the car there it's you know, the roof rack up on top which obviously helps um, I'll have a bit of a look in the canopy the canopy's from um, from Sydney it's, it's a bit, had it made because the price and you couldn't sort of sort of couldn't compete with it but, um, so being a chippy by trade I've done all the inside how I want it I've had quite a few different setups tray backs canvas canopies extra cabs single cabs tubs with drawers and you know trying to work out what suits what you want to do is the key so that's what we've done with this up the front obviously we've got this little 100 mil lip here where the drawer needs to sit back so it can pull out so we found a water tank that fits in there perfectly so we've got 50 litres of water there you just chuck your tap out and you've got 50 litres of water a um, little 12 volt shower sits up in there so it's great you just boil the billy and a little bit of water and you can, kids can have a bath that sort of thing out back interior drawers um, you know they're nice and long most of our camping gear in there um, so yeah a couple there's actually four fold out chairs a um, couple of cookers all that sort of stuff this one just the other side of things whatever you want to chuck in there when you're going away just gives you that extra storage fill it full of food if you're going on a long trip without the van um, obviously open this one up we've got a little travel buddy in there so we can cook the kids some nuggets and that sort of thing washing up tub which you know, got all our billy and all that sort of stuff in it um, Bunnings drawers, so pots and pans, all that plates and bowls, utensils, um, all that cutlery. You know, coffee, sauces, basically everything you want. And, you know, this, this little cover sits back up and stops them folding out. 
this is on Velcro, a little chopping board. So if you want to chuck around some cheese or some salami or something like that, you can you can chuck it around the camp, which is a good little thing. Four to letter angle. It's one of the good old old angles. I've had it for years and years, and you'd have to pry it out of my fingers. I think it's yeah, never missed a beat. Pretty much never been switched off in in probably seven or eight years. Um, just love it. Again, a little space down the back here. Got the kids' chairs, shovel, uh, extension lead here, which we can plug into the inverter and you know, run stuff for the telly. It's a 1500 watt, 3000 watt peak inverter. Um, it tells you how much volts in your battery. You can change it to a percentage if you want. Also tells you your amps or what you're drawing. It's got the two on there, which is good. So that's pretty much covered this side of it. I'll duck around the other side. And when we've got the canopy made, we put the air, big air vents in the front, just to, to let that bit of air through. And then a little vent up there, out there, just lets the heat of the fridge out, pushes the air through, pressurises the canopy. I don't think I've ever had a speck of dust in this canopy, so really, really happy with that. Um, so this is obviously the back side of the drawers. I've got a fair bit of room up here, really, when you need to shove stuff up there. These little removable and you know, changeable tie downs, chuck them anywhere you want. So we've got one up there to tie down back onto there, and there's one down here, so you can actually put bigger stuff and tie it down, secure it. Um, water tank coming through there. Got the rod racks up there. We keep a few rods in there. Um, you know, if, if you ever want to, like you probably would have saw the little backpack in the other drawer. So it's there. It's got 90% of your gear there you need. If you're somewhere and you pull up for lunch, you want to have a bit of a flip, you can do that. Um, it's a Thunder 20 amp DC DC charger. Happy with it. Really happy. It's um, seen some mixed reviews on them. People sort of reckon they crap out, and but I mean I I haven't had any dramas, so I'm, I'm happy with it so far does have an arc pack which is my dual battery set up down in there um, only reason I've really got the arc pack is just it's got the uh, when I pull up somewhere it's got the the 240 that I can just plug in and then everything runs off 240 really happy with it too so toolbox just an old one I had since I was about 17 just a cheap little toolbox when I've upgraded to a better tool kit had that laying around fits in there millimeter perfect so happy with it just chuck a few tools that sort of thing in um, the Makita radio we just made up a little box to chuck it up there and you can um, pull it out if you want to, set it around the campfire, or you can, if you're working somewhere, you just open your door and turn it on, have some tunes, which is handy. The drawers, as you would have noticed on the other side, they had to sit up about 100 mil, so you could pull the drawer out and clear this lip, a little dust seal. So we had all this space underneath that you know, we decided better do something with. So that one opens up. Under there, I've got jumper leads for the little arc pack thing I've got. Um, my tire deflator, some fuses electrical fittings, that sort of stuff, just so you can do some on road repairs. This one here, um, it's quite a bit of space under there actually, so we've got umbrellas, and we don't see sort of beach fishing rods are under there. Uh, this is my little fold out table, so when you sort of just pull up on the side of the road or you do a little, want to do a little weekend trip with the boat, you've got 90% of what you want in the car, you just sort of chuck some clothes and some food in and you're right to go, which is what we want. Um, in my job now, you know, I don't have a lot of tools, so I can basically just leave a ladder on the roof and a little carry-all of inspection tools and I'm right to go. So, right guys, so that was the Hilux. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, put a lot of work into it and all the accessories I fitted myself, all the electricals done myself, um, you know, with a hand from Jeff here and there and designed basically everything myself before I bought the car. Saved a lot of money doing it that way and it's just a car that I'll keep for a long time. So, apart from, like I said, those few little um, reverse camera upgrades we want to do, and pretty much just um, I've got some little LED lights that I want to put in the canopy because it doesn't have any light in there at the moment. So, but other than that, that's the Hilux. So, cheers, guys. Um, stay tuned. We'll do a walkthrough of another vehicle next week. So, cheers.